Welcome back everyone to another B-Team tutorial, Attack of the B-Team tutorial. This is a mob farm. A, not a mob farm, an iron farm! That's what I meant to say. I've got a mob farm already. Anyway, let's do this! Okay, first of all, I have taken the liberty of making a uh, monolithic monolithic uh, smeltery. Over here, if you don't know how to make a smeltery, there's plenty of uh, stuff out there to tell you how to do that. It's very simple. Uh, you actually get it in a book when you first start. So uh, the basics are good. I just made it tall, so that's you know that's all there is to it. There's a, a tank there, one drain with a faucet, and one controller. I have also connected up a uh, creative uh, power source just to um, power up my lava fabricator and keep the lava flowing, so I don't have to worry about that running out. You will want to do something similar to this. You're going to connect the lava fabricator up. Let me show you the recipe for a lava fabricator. Blaze rods. So you got to get to the nether and get some blaze rods. You got a redstone reception coil, which is very simple. Very simple. I don't know how to go back. There's a way to go back. Anyway, uh, a machine frame, some obsidian, magma creams. Machine frame you can do with iron and glass and gold. All right, very simple. Uh, you want to tie that into your uh, to your power system at your base. However, you're going to put that together. This is not something for the beginning of the game. You're going to need a little time to put some of this these resources together, obviously. So you know, don't expect to do an iron farm like this the first day you're on the server yeah, or or playing the game. It's going to take some time. I've got uh, the lava fabricator feeding in with fluid ducts into a portable tank uh, outputting to into the seared tank on the smeltery kind of an unlimited source of lava I never run out uh, we should be fine there so anyway we've made a glass cube over here we're gonna make this into our spawning area and what we want to do first of all is find the center there's the center we're gonna put an auto spawner up a few doesn't really need to be but just keep it out of the way <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is we're going to run some power into the top here. doesn't really matter what side you use, but uh, I'm just going to, to simplify and make it a little clean. Oopsie. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That stinks. Okay, we're going we're gonna to now put in some fluid ducts because the auto spawner, which let me show you the recipe for that too, uh, machine frame again, a redstone reception coil, emeralds, magma creams, nether wart, plastic sheets. Plastic sheets you get from rubber trees, you burn rubber in a, uh, the raw rubber in a furnace, and then you burn the product of that in another, in a furnace again, and you get plastic, uh, raw plastic, then you make that into a, a 4x4, and you get plastic sheets, you get four plastic sheets, so raw, rubber bar, which you get from burning the raw rubber, and then you get, I don't remember how to do this. Yeah, well, you can do all kinds of stuff with rubber. Anywho, let's just keep moving. Moving right along. I'm going to put this over on this side. I'm going to keep this straight and narrow. Okay, so that's going to feed in mob essence. Because this is going to need to run, run on mob essence. Okay. What we're going to do next is I'm going to run the mob essence over this away. We're going to take out this corner here just to make it clean. And we're going to run the fluid ducts up like this. And then we're going to run... doesn't really matter where I put it, but maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of go over a little bit like this so it doesn't connect. And then we're going to... you know what? No, I want to go up first. Oh no wait. Uh yeah. Oh, daytime. Let's make it daytime. That's better. Let's see. Okay. Let's line up first of all. Let's line up where the mob grinder is going to go cuz the mob grinder has to go in the not in the center, but it's best to be in the center. It, it has a 5x5 five five kill range, so if you place it down like this, the grinding section is on the inside. You know, when it's powered up, you'll see what I mean. We're going to make some space underneath here. We also need to clear both sides. 
of the mob grinder because we need to do a few things. First of all, let's run power up into the bottom. We're going to run fluid ducts off of one side and item ducts off the other. All right. You'll see why shortly. The other thing we're going to do, and I've, I found this with my mob grinder, is that sometimes it's not enough to have this guy here. You put this on vacuum, by the way. Uh, you put that on vacuum, and that'll suck out all this, the mob drops from the mobs that are being killed by the mob grinder. But I've noticed that sometimes that doesn't, it's not really that reliable. So what I've, I've done on my mob grinder and my Attack of the B-Team server is I put a hopper right here, which is in the base of the kill zone, and we set that to output, and then it just outputs automatically back into the item pipes, and that catches anything that the mob grinder itself misses. So let's uh, continue on. Next will be, oh yeah, power. We gotta run power this away. We'll put all this back. We'll just run some power conduits over to this corner. Oh, hey, we got a cave under there. Let's just clean that up a little bit. Hello. Yikes. There, that's better. <laughs> okay, well, derp's in a name. What can I say? And just make this clean. We're going to run these guys up the corner also. And over that way. And then what we're going to do is instead of... What we're going to do is we're going to... Right about here, so we're going to pop in another creative cell. Now, I'm just doing this for ease of... For simplicity's sake... But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want a resonant energy cell there. And then you're going to tie that into your power system at your base. Uh, that's going to be your most likely course of action, I think. So then we're going to run that fluid ducts. Down like so. We'll just run it down under, the, under here. And... Um, that's the output, so I need to run. Let's run this way. I'm going to come up a couple. Three, actually. Then we're going to run some portable tanks like this. Um, yeah, two's and two should be enough. But we're going to run these up and over like this. Also looks good that way when you you know you can you can do it however you like but you know that's the way I like it and then what we need to do is we need to run an output off the bottom what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get a cover we'll we'll tidy all this up later on but I'm just gonna get a glass cover for now clear glass cover oh I already had some that's good. And we're gonna slice that conduit right there because I don't actually want those to connect. So we're gonna purify things. Oops, right there. A little bit. And it doesn't need to be glass. You can hide this behind a wall or, or whatever. Um, you know, however you want to do it. And we're gonna go out now and then up. So that it feeds into the mob spawner or into the auto spawner over there. Okay. Next, next will be the item duct. Item duct output. So now what we got to do here is we got to run this item duct over here. Okay. So that's going to take both those feeds out, and we're going to run those over this away. We'll cover this up too. We're gonna put a chest. You know what? I'm just gonna put a chest uh, right on top of it, I guess, right there. That's not a very good spot, is it? 
Let's run the chest over here, right up against that. <coughs> and we'll put this guy like that. Okay. Now I need to get down low here so that we can do this. The input's right. Uh, I need a pneumatic servo. I'm going to put a servo in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to whitelist and we're going to turn off the turn off the controls. But what we want this to, to catch is all the leftover stuff, the, the, the lungs. Um, we want lungs, we want muscle. I'll show you why this is important. <laughs> muscle, we want heart. Uh, here, this thing needs to go away. We want the heart, and we want what's the other thing? Lung, muscle, heart, brain. Because those things will all be drops that this that this uh, these mobs will drop and include in, in addition to what we want, which is the iron shovels that will feed our mob farm. Yes, I said iron shovels, or feed our uh, our smeltery. Okay, so that should be good there. I'm going to cover this up. We can walk over it. And we're going to run this item duct up into here. I'm going to make this... No, I was right the first time. It's going to go in like that. I need another servo because I only want iron shovels to go in there. Shovel, here we go. Oh, I was already in it. Uh, okay, iron shovel, white list, and redstone control off. Okay, so that's that. Now, now what we got is we've got the output from the faucet. We want to automate this so we don't have to worry about it. So, what we need is one of these timers. And let me show you the recipe for these guys. It's not too bad. Some redstone you need. And you need to make these circuit plates and, and all this stuff. But let me show you each individual one of these. Circuit plate. And let's, uh, let's make this a little... I usually make it about 10 seconds. So that you right click on this and it gives you this timing interval thing. Okay. Hello, uh, E, then R. Okay, circuit plates are very simple. You just smelt smooth stone, again, in a furnace. And you get two circuit plates. Okay. Uh, there's a way to go back. I know there is. Now, conductive plates, these are all derivative of the circuit plates. So, now conductive plates, you want a circuit plate with redstone. Pretty simple. Let me, let me do this. Make it a lot easier. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Problem in creative. I'm so used to just clicking. R gives you this. Okay. So conductive plate. Uh, cathode plate. No. Nope. Cathode plate is a circuit plate with redstone. And the pointer. Circuit plate, redstone, torch, and stone. And then you got anodes over here in the corner, and this is circuit plates and redstone. So it's a little complicated to make it one timer, but it's not too bad. It's just, you know, it's not that resource intensive. So, uh, and I don't have a basin again. I'm like Jared and Eric B. I'm like 40% prepared. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put a basin down. Then we're going to put a chest over here. We're going to make some item ducts. Notice I didn't put it under right under the basin. We're going to do that, and we're going to put another chest on top of that. Now, uh, what I would recommend is both of these chests should be tied into whatever inventory system you have in your, in your, in your base, because otherwise it's going to get very, very clogged up. Okay, we're going to use a hopper. The hopper is going to you want to connect to that item duct over there. 
and that means what that'll do then is that anything that comes out of this which is being activated by the timer anything that comes out and into the basin once it's once it's clean once it's uh, dried it'll pop right into the hopper below and up into this chest okay and it'll only do that if I set this correctly I like to use the pneumatic servos even if because otherwise it just doesn't seem to work so I'm going to disable that we're going to leave that blacklist because everything that goes through there needs to pop out anyway and let's make it daytime again okay so now we've got power to the mob grinder we do it's idling we should have power to the auto spawner we do it's idling and now what we're going to do is tidy this up in the center here because we can't have that we're going to have to use a cover there and that's okay I'll just use a clear one throw a clear cover there clear cover there put blocks up in there okay now we're all set there alrighty now uh, one thing that I do I've noticed that mobs sometimes will especially with these auto spawners they'll spawn and they'll stand they'll spawn way up here and they'll stand on the auto spawner well and then they then they can't go anywhere so I just put covers over the pipes here in the center gives it a clean look and prevents that from happening so we're just gonna do that real fast and you again you can use whatever whoops you can use whatever covers you want you can do how you can do it however you want actually you can cover it up with whatever and then we'll just actually we don't need to cover that up we'll just leave that for now okay so that will prevent them from spawning and staying on the auto spawner itself okay so now what we want to do is we got this safari net and this has one of these um, Oh, I don't I can't do this in creative for some reason you can't just right click on something with a safari net in your hand it just won't work so I have to use a uh, launcher I think I can kick him out yeah I can kick him out there we go oh it doesn't get rid of him anyway cool so that's the guy we're looking for so you want to get one of these guys here okay entity creature name uh, Darwin mobs I'm not sure what they call them exactly uh, but uh, I guess if you're a Pokemon type player, you know what the heck this thing is. It's similar to some Pokemon creatures. They've got quite a few hearts, so but that's not that big a deal. The mob grind will take care of them. And what these guys do when you kill them... Let's just... Why? Okay. Is... They don't drop anything because for some reason that one didn't <sighs> get back here there they drop iron shovels iron shovels all day long so that's what we need this for the iron shovels now will come out through these autumn pipes and up into the smeltery and they'll just drop in there and they'll just keep cranking away item you know with uh, with iron shovels all day long so one thing that I had to make this a little bigger than I, ex I wanted to because they kept spawning outside so just in case they're too far away from this hello just in case they're too far away from the uh, mob grinder uh, I just made some conveyors here to pop them over you can use water uh, however you want to use it uh, I like the conveyors it you know as we're kind of we're kind of doing you know the whole I don't know, m you know, modded Minecraft kind of deal anyway, so water seems kind of antiquated, uh, to me at least. Uh, let's put one more there, and I'll put one more there. And this is kind of like in my uh, my mob farm on, on the server. Uh, you've seen, I'm sure, well, you've seen if you've watched my server uh, series. And we'll just do that. And now we're going to drop this reusable safari net into the spawner 
And now because I have no mob essence in the system yet, it won't go anywhere. It will not work until I've loaded these tanks up with mob essence. And actually, I have to make them output. Let's say output. You'll see mobs. And I screwed up because I did not do something right. It's very important that you set this to exact copy. Yes. Otherwise, you'll get a bunch of other random stuff. Oh, that's not good. And you see how that dropped all that stuff because it didn't have anywhere to go. That's my phone. Hold on a second. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay, now you can see this guy's just—it's just cranking away now. Look at that. That's good. We're gonna—we're gonna tidy this up a little bit so I don't fall down in a hole. We'll cover that up later. I hear skeletons below me, but that's okay. Now you'll see that the mob grinder is—is is kicking out the work. It's also supplying these tanks with mob essence. You may need some more to prime the pumps a little bit to keep it going. I'm just gonna load up the tanks. Uh, and, and my uh, mob grinder at on the server, I have a huge tank in the back that I keep mob essence in, and I just run some regular spawners to keep that up. Uh, I, I've noticed that it, this seems to supply enough. If as long as you have it loaded in the beginning, it should supply enough mob essence to keep it going, uh, just from killing these guys. Now, we should see mob drops coming through. Let's check the chest. Yep, we've got lungs and hearts in there. And we've got iron shovels dropping into the smeltery. And you see this will fill up quite fast. Since these don't stack, it's going to fill up kind of fast. And uh, they'll start smelting away. Now, what you'll see is the timer here will kick around. And it will turn on the faucet so it starts draining the molten iron into the into the casting basin. Well, that's as much as it's made so far. See, you now it's going to kick on again because the molten iron is piling up from the shovels. And then you'll see it disappear because it's an iron block now. It should be not transferring. I did something wrong. Oops. Did I do something wrong? Item hopper. There we go. <laughs> There's the first iron block. Okay, so we're going to AFK here for a few minutes, and I'm going to tidy this up. And I will be right back to show you how much stuff we get. We're going to tidy this up a little bit, and I'll be right back. Well, we'll be back in, let's say, 15 minutes. Okay, be back in 15 minutes. Okay, welcome back to the horror show. I actually waited 20 minutes just to see how we did, round it up a little bit. As you can see, the um, the tanks are empty. However, they are continually supplying enough mob essence to the auto spawner to to uh, to spawn up our little guys here, little turtle guys, whatever they call them. And let's see what uh, let's see what we got in 20 minutes. Okay, ready? 48 blocks. 48 blocks in 20 minutes. That is pretty tremendous um, that's that's a lot that is a lot of iron and this is why I did this because I was building a dome on the moon and I was ma making out of advanced blast walls and advanced glass walls and stuff and it used uses a lot a lot a lot a ton of iron and it galactic craft in general uses a, a ton of iron so it's something you want to definitely uh, look into here. You know, if you need a lot of iron, this is the way to go. Uh, just so you can see what kind of other drops we're getting here. They're moving right along too. Not that you really need those unless you're going to do necromancy, but you definitely won't need that many. 50 blocks just in that few minutes we've been talking. So, so this is my mob farm. My iron farm. God, I keep saying mob. Gosh. I'm so silly. It must be because I haven't recorded in a while. I will uh, talk about that more on another video. Perhaps. Anyway. Yes. So, anybody have any questions or anything like that? Uh, feel free to comment in the co in the comments below. Oops. Creative mode. And I will uh, respond as best I can. And uh, if you have any ideas how to make this better or whatever. Also, you know. 
comment below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I do some other B-Team stuff. I also do a Life in the Woods series, which I have to get back into, although I'm going to reset the map. And uh, we're on the Dirtville server. Me and my daughter play on the Dirtville server, and I may be starting up something else. Where's that skeleton? I don't care. Soon enough. I don't know. We'll, s we'll see. It kind of depends on if I ever have the time. Uh, time has been kind of difficult lately, so... Anyhow, uh, that is that, people. 53 blocks. Uh, I, I think uh, on my server I've used about 5,000 blocks. 5,000 blocks of iron to make the domes on the moon. And I still have about 2,000 left just from running this a little while. So, massive amounts of iron on the beat team. It's the way to go, people. It's the way to go. Oh, and if uh, if you need power, um, this this you know using a creative cell is all fine and dandy for this, but on my server world I use uh, Swoco's Cheaty Power 2.0 system, which isn't so cheaty really. It takes a lot of invar and a lot of uh, lava fabricators and a lot of uh, what do you call it? It's, uh, Magmatic dynamos and fluiducts and power, you know, you got the resonant cells and everything else. So, you know, things are, uh, it's its not cheap, that's for sure, but it works really well and it holds power excellent. I run everything in my base, including Tesseracts to the moon. So I will show that in my next Bitim video, okay? But I will link to Swoko's tutorial in the description to this video, okay? And I tidied this up a little bit so you can walk around and stuff. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. I didn't. I didn't wall that in. I kind of like having the exposed piping there. And, you know, with the glass, it's kind of cool because you can see everything. But I didn't put a roof on it or anything either. So, all right, everybody, like and subscribe. And uh, we have a 100 sub special coming soon. Don't know exactly what that's going to be just yet. We're still working on a few details. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. Give me some suggestions. What do you think? What you should do. My daughter and I. It's not just me. She helps a lot when she's not in school. But she is. So, that's tough. <laughs> uh, anyway. Alright, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Later, taters. Take four.